Rapamycin is an immunosuppressant drug used to prevent organ transplantation rejection, but many people use it as a longevity drug because in animal studies it does have life extension effects. In this video, we're going to take a look at a new study that examined the effects of off-label rapamycin use in healthy human adults. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to extend their health span. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. Do it! So one of the authors of the study is Matt Caberlane, who I had on my podcast as well, and he's a very established longevity researcher who's been doing it for decades. And this study is pretty much looking at people who are taking rapamycin off label for generally the sake of uh, promoting longevity. And they just look at what are the results. It's not like a clinical trial, it's not really controlled, it's just like a mostly like a questionnaire based, uh, but it still can give us some insight into the these 333 adults and their experience with. Uh, this uh, drug. The longevity benefits of rapamycin are generally mediated by inhibition of mechanistic target of rapamycin or mTOR, which is this growth pathway that is involved in longevity and aging of uh, all species generally. And uh, yeah, inhibiting mTOR with rapamycin has been found to increase lifespan in laboratory organisms, including yeast, nematode worms, fruit flies, and mice. And in addition to the lifespan extension, rapamycin has other health span benefits in rodents, such as lower cancer incidence, improved cognition, improved kidney function, preservation of tendon, improved intestinal function, and reduced gut dysbiosis. So let's look at the demographics of the people in the study. So we have them divided into rapamycin users and non-users. So there were 333 rapamycin users and 172 non-rapamycin users. I went through the table and uh, the participants in both groups were actually pretty similar. So they were around the same age, their height, their uh, BMI, their weight was also pretty much the same, same in both uh, genders. Of course, the men are a bit heavier than the women, but uh, both men and women in the same groups, in the different groups uh, were uh, similar. They had similar lifestyle habits, both of them. Uh, both groups exercised in a similar way, ate a healthy diet pretty much, and also followed actually aspects of time restricted eating or intermittent fasting. Tobacco use was uh, qu quite similar. Interestingly enough, the rapamycin users were a bit higher drinkers, so like more than two alcoholic drinks per day. So 12.7% for rapamycin user men and 7.3% in uh, non rapamycin users uh, men and 8.2% in uh, rapamycin uh, women and 4.8% in rapamycin women. Of course, this is just statistics, but uh, yeah, like the rapamycin users actually generally had a little bit higher alcohol use, but everything else was pretty much the same in terms of their healthy lifestyle. So it kind of helps to confound for the healthy user bias, at least a little bit. How long had those people been using the rapamycin? So uh, about 23% of the women were using the rapamycin for less than a month and 11.9% of the men had, had used the rapamycin for less than a month. One to six months, 26% for women, 30.4% for men. Six months to a year, 16.4% for the women, 19.2% for men. One to three years, 23.5% for women, 24.7% for men. And over three years, which is a long time, 15% for women, 9.6% for men. So there were both like new users of rapamycin. So I would consider using rapamycin for less than six months, still relatively like a new user. And uh, we also had a uh, long-term user, so one to three years, so actually almost like a quarter of the entire group uh, was using rapamycin uh, for like a long term already. What kind of dosages did they use? So the most common dosage was somewhere between three to six milligrams, which is also like the clinical uh, dosage for the uh, clinic kidney uh, transplantation. There was of course more men in the study than women, but uh, yeah, men generally took uh, like uh, even like in the larger doses, there were significant the more men taking the larger doses above uh, six milligrams and the only dosages of uh, per week 18 and 20 milligrams, there's also like, I think like there's probably like one, uh, one men for each of those. So the men were kind of more, more experimental with the higher doses as well. So what did the rapamycin users experience? What was their perceived benefits of the users using uh, rapamycin? Of course, we have to keep in mind that the placebo effect is quite strong. And of course, if you are taking rapamycin off label, then chances are you're doing it for the longevity benefits and you believe that it has benefits for your longevity and health. So it has a huge placebo effect that is hard to control for, but we can just have to like uh, keep it in mind that people taking rapamycin off-label generally would uh, expect that it has longevity benefits and that may 
make them perceive the benefits as well. To, you know, I'm getting all these benefits from taking uh, rapamycin. So uh, rapamycin has anti-aging properties. What do they think? Agree. 65% of the people taking rapamycin believed that it has uh, these anti-aging uh, benefits and 0% disagreed. And uh, neither was 34.5%. So these are the individuals probably like, I don't know, <laughs> maybe it does. I'm just maybe taking it for some other reason, but uh, you know, chances are they're taking it for the longevity benefits. My health has improved since taking rapamycin. 44.7% agree with that. So almost like half, a bit less than half. 5.7% disagree and 49.5% are neither. So that exactly 50% pretty much uh, are the ones that uh, don't know if it has improved their health or not. I'm happier. 34.8% agree. 4.8% disagree. 60.4% don't know if it has improved has made them happier my brain works better 35 percent uh, agree 5.1 percent disagree 59.5 percent are in the middle i feel younger 37.5 percent agree 5.7 percent disagree and 56.8 percent are yeah in the middle i have more energy 38.7 percent agree 6.3 percent disagree 55 percent are neither family and friends have commented that i look good 38.7 percent agree 7.2 percent disagree and 5.1 percent are neither so it's a pretty long list i'm not going to go through it a lot more but uh, the general trend is the same that around like one third or one quarter of the people taking rapamycin saw the benefits related to like how they feel, what, how do they look, um, interest in sex, arthritis, uh, urinary flow, quality of sleep. Around like one third to one fourth of the people saw or perceived to gain those benefits. So it's like a still perceived subjective experience. And uh, maybe like a very smaller amount, very insignificant amount of people disagreed with those perceived benefits. And the vast majority of people generally half or a lot more, even like 80 or 90% in some cases, uh, 80%, uh, 70%, some somewhere between there, those individuals are like in the middle, they don't know. So they're kind of neither. So it's again, you know, many people do experience the placebo strong effect much more strongly if they believe in the supplement, etc. And a lot of people who don't like really feel that they don't feel any difference they're gonna be somewhat in the middle that neither like it should work or i think it should work or something uh but uh i haven't myself like you know experienced anything disappointed what about the negative side effects so there are also reported negative side effects and uh reported frequency potentially negative health conditions experienced in the last three months by the survey respondents and in this analysis they only include that rapamycin users who had been taking rapamycin for at least 90 days so three months at least abdominal cramps only seven percent of the uh, total participants experienced and among the non-users which was 172 participants 14 percent experienced abdominal cramps among the rapamycin users so among 245 individuals only two percent experienced abdominal cramps Depression, 15% of the non-users experienced it and 4.1% of rapamycin users experienced. Abdominal pain, 20.9% of the non-users and 8.6% of rapamycin users. Muscle tightness, 45.3% among non-users and 29.8% among the rapamycin users. So among these negative side effects, rapamycin users did experience uh, less of these uh, negative side effects with the exception of mouth ulceration or just mouth sores. So among the non-users, 4.7% experienced mouth ulcers, whereas 14.7% among rapamycin users, almost like three times more, uh, they experience mouth ulcers. And that, Matt Caberlin also talked about that in the podcast, that this is the kind of main negative side effect that almost all, not all of them, but you know, a lot of the, the most common negative side effect of uh, rapamycin use is the mouth uh, ulcers. Overall, I think it's a pretty interesting study. Of course, it's not an actual clinical trial. It doesn't really tell you about the actual, you know, effects of uh, rapamycin. A lot of it might be placebo because the people who are taking rapamycin off-label already kind of believe in it or they're doing it for the sake of uh, longevity. But I think it's still worthwhile to like uh, research these individuals who uh, aren't 
like uh, yeah like in the clinical trials and to see like what are their perceived experience while taking uh, rapamycin now personally do i think that rapamycin has any longevity benefits or does it extend human lifespan i think it's too early to say that uh, there are of course yeah like these uh, dozens of animal studies showing that it does extend to lifespan but you know you know it's very almost impossible to uh, actually know whether or not it works in humans but other than that thanks for watching this video make sure you click a like subscribe notification bell as well my name is seem stay optimized stay empowered